Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to talk about an, an assessment that we worked on and that I implemented in a third year microbiology subject. So essentially the project, as Thiru said, science communication is a really key skill. And we want to be considering that when we're looking at STEM curriculum. And as she also mentioned, that COVID pandemic really highlighted the importance of STEM students and professionals and their ability to be able to communicate effectively with the public. So Wikipedia is a collaborative open access encyclopedia. And as we all know, it's a great source of information on many topics for the wider community, so not just science. In this session, I'll introduce the activity that we developed. And uh, it really, the focus was to enhance collaborative learning, critical thinking, and science communication in the class. And I'll talk about some of the key benefits that was noted by the students as well. So generally the project, what we wanted to do was get students to analyze Wikipedia articles for their general readability to a lay audience. So looking at the accuracy of information and how current the information was. So in collaboration with Wikimedia, some articles on the topic of immunology were selected. And these were all concepts that had previously been covered uh, in the subject. And then students, we got them to allocate themselves to a group of four. And for those that didn't self-allocate, I uh, touch base and assign them to a group. We then had a bit of an introductory session from Wikimedia, and it was delivered by Belinda, who will basically give you the short version of that today. And Alice came along to the session too. And in that, students were really learning about the various sections in Wikipedia, how to use independent sources to find their information, um, and as well as how to make an account and do some edits. And that was just in case there were some students that were particularly interested in going on to do their own edits in Wikipedia articles after they got their assignments back. So a bit of a, an option for them if they wanted to contribute. And this is essentially how the assignment ran. So we had classes uh, that were workshops and they were scheduled online classes. Uh, from that, there were some students that wanted to come into campus. They preferred to uh, work in their group face-to-face. -face. So I actually ran a bit of a hybrid session where I had students working in their groups online in breakout rooms and I had students in the classroom. But essentially, they could all ask me questions about the assessment if they wanted to. So after that introductory session, Students chose an article from a list that was provided uh, and they all did different articles. They then evaluated that article using a rubric that was provided to them. Uh, and that was just about the readability. And what I got them to do was to copy their Wikipedia article into a Word document or something similar and share that in their group, and then use kind of the track changes and the comments to make annotations on the article and maybe sections that might need to be improved if there was something that was a bit confusing or needed to be reworded. They were annotating uh, on the article. So in parallel, we wanted to integrate a little bit of generative AI into the assignment. And so I got each of the students to generate an article on the same topic uh, that was aimed at a general audience. So each student in the group of four generated their own article, and then I got them to choose which one they thought was the best 
and used that same rubric to evaluate the AI article. This was really to get them thinking about the language used in both Wikipedia and AI and make comparisons between the two. And they essentially provided these in a, a short report. They also wrote about their recommendations for the Wikipedia article and reflected on the importance of information literacy and science communication. I also added in a bit of a self and peer evaluation for the students to assess their contribution to the assignment compared with others in their group, um, basically just to keep that fairness there. If they thought that they had done more work than others, that's all uh, assessed in those peer assessments. So this is just a bit of an example of what one of the assessments that I got back looked like. Um, just note, this group of students were particularly enthusiastic and overly meticulous with their annotations and suggestions for improvement. As you can see, all of those different comments there on this article. Um, and so this was on autoimmunity. You might not be able to read all of those comments, but essentially that top comment says, it's very confusing and poorly written introduction. It doesn't really tell you much information or clarify anything. You should be able to have a basic understanding from the intro. So those are the kinds of things that they were um, noting down on their articles. Um, and the comments in this format were particularly useful to me because I could see individual contributions. Uh, so I thought that this worked very well using track changes. So some students would actually go into the article and make changes or using comments uh, to annotate. And this is a bit of an example of the rubric which you will get today um, that we gave to students. So we gave students a rubric to evaluate their Wikipedia and their AI articles. So essentially we asked them to consider the content in the article. So was it covered thoroughly? Was the information accurate to their knowledge? Uh, the language and understandability, was it clear language that could be understood by somebody that doesn't have a background in science? Uh, was What was the value? of any images or figures in the article. So did they aid in understanding of the topic? Were they relevant? The overall organization of the article, is it logical? Does it flow? Does it have clear headings that help guide the reader? Uh, did they identify any gaps in the information or was there comprehensive coverage of the topic? And what was the relevance and currency of the references? Were they recent? Uh, were they from reputable sources? And we had one more uh, that was only if applicable to them, and that was, was the article culturally inclusive? So does it have diverse representation uh, and perspectives? And so that's what they used to analyze the article they compared the Wikipedia and AI articles. They wrote up a little report on this comparison uh, and any improvements that they thought that they could make on the article in Wikipedia. And so after that assignment, we surveyed the students to get their thoughts and perspectives on this assessment. And this was an anonymous survey completed in class. So we just used a, a QR code and there were 42 students out of the 60 that responded. So from this, we found that more than half, so 60% of the students found the assignment useful. 17% uh, said that they didn't think they found it useful, but the majority of students did find it different to other assignments that they had previously completed. What really actually impressed me was that half the students thought that they had learned from their peers in this assessment. And so we know that collaboration, teamwork, those uh, kinds of skills are often important graduate capabilities. So I was actually really happy to see that 
50% of them thought that they'd learned from their peers. And so after asking the students uh, whether they found the assignment useful, we asked them to comment on their response. And so this is a quick thematic analysis of the comments of the main sort of themes and findings that students thought um, that were helpful. So understanding uh, accuracy of articles and reliability of the information. So you can see that there are a couple of quotes that I've put there. So it was helpful to see that Wikipedia and AI are lacking important information, uh, as well as checking the references in the wiki article. Um, they thought it was good to do fact checking and having an awareness of any biases. Uh, scientific language and research skills, they thought that was useful. So understanding the barrier in science communication and gaining more understanding of how to use wiki and AI tools. Surprisingly, and uh, I was, again, happy to see that some of them found collaboration and group work useful. So working together to actually provide some constructive criticism as a group. Uh, and there's one quote there that said the structure made it really collaborative and it was a more enjoyable assignment. Uh, and then there was general interest and engagement. So some students said, you know, it was different to something. Um, they hadn't done something like this before. Uh, and so that's what made it interesting to them. So they were the general comments about what, what was useful. Um, obviously, there was those students that thought it wasn't that useful. So the, the comments from them and I guess the main reasons for why they didn't find it useful was relevance to course material and the, the format. So I take this as a, a bit uh, on me. Maybe I need to explain to them a bit more. It's not really about content here. We're focusing on science communication um, skills. It's not the knowledge of the concepts in the subject. So I think maybe a bit more signposting from me uh, might help in that way. But um, you can see comments there. Didn't find it feel relevant to course material. Um, didn't seem super relevant to bacteriology. We were doing immunology, um, but it was useful for understanding how Wikipedia works. So there were sort of positive comments mixed in with some constructive criticism. Some just didn't like the format, which I would expect. It's a bit different. Not all students are going to like every uh, format of an assessment. Uh, there was a little bit of perceived redundancy. So Although there were lots of students that found the assessment really useful and uh, they liked evaluating sources, some students believe they already know how to use Wikipedia in an assignment, um, so it didn't bring much to them. Um, you can see that one student said that it highlighted the importance of Wikipedia and critical thinking um, about writing, but it didn't help much beyond that. Well, that's what I want them to get from it. I want them to get think about think critically about writing. So to me, that's useful. Um, and beyond that, just a bit of personal disinterest. Someone said it was a bit boring and another student didn't really care. So I can't do much about that if students don't really care um, about what they're doing. We asked them to rate the readability of Wikipedia and AI articles. So not surprisingly, 91% of students um, thought that that AI article was pitched at a general audience level. Um, so for a general audience to understand, but 45% of students felt that the Wikipedia article was pitched at a more advanced level. So they disagreed that it uh, was pitched to a general audience. We did ask them uh, a few more questions about readability uh, in comparison with other sources. I'm not going to go into all of that today, mainly for the sake of time. 
Interestingly as well, we asked them if they thought that performing this assessment helped them to achieve the subject intended learning outcomes. Notably, I had a silo that was directly related to this assessment. Evaluate and critique immunology related articles as part of a team for their suitability in communicating topics to a general audience. 31% of students said that this assessment didn't help them meet the learning outcomes. Uh, so I guess that's just something to think about. We really signpost our subject intended learning outcomes everywhere on our LMS subject learning guides with the assessments and weekly. So I guess it's just a point to think about. Maybe students sometimes don't really get the point of uh, silos or my students uh, don't in this case, some of them. However, 69% uh, of them said that they, it did help them meet it. 90% of those students hit the right uh, silo. But you can see that uh, those students are also uh, think that they are meeting other silos within this subject as well through this process. So I guess finally, I'll mention that we asked the students what skills they thought that they had gained by completing this assignment. And it's worth mentioning that even the students that did not find the assignment useful believed that they'd gained something from this, even though if it was just learning a little bit more about AI. But the main themes were researching and editing skills. So that comment up the top mentions how to annotate effectively, identifying different issues, um, working with different group members, having different perspectives. Uh, critical thinking and analysis. So students uh, believe that they were developing these skills. Uh, so attention to detail, critical thinking skills about sources of information, which was really good for me to hear. Uh, understanding of Wikipedia and AI. So how to evaluate Wikipedia, evaluate sources. Uh, that comment there says that they learnt general knowledge about the topic as well uh, and collaborative skills. So there were quite a few comments about collaboration and teamwork mixed in. So um, communication with their group, communicating complex topics uh, and teamwork skills. So even though some of them thought that the assignment wasn't that useful to them, uh, they all got something out of it. So just some kind of final thoughts, I guess, on the, this assessment piece uh, was the annotate feature worked really well for me. Um, I was able to see individual contributions as well that sort of played into that self and peer uh, assessment. There were a small number of students that maybe didn't like the format or found it irrelevant, um, but I think this is a bit on me. I think I could probably work on my communication skills a little bit and communicating to the students the purpose of the assignment um, in a bit of a more clear way to get them or help them to understand it's not just about the content and really bring it back to things like graduate capabilities and um, communication and literacy. Uh, this year, this was mainly completed online. So it did work really well online. You could definitely do this completely online. Um, but there were some students that wanted to come in and work in their group face-to-face. -face. So um, I did hold those hybrid sessions uh, and I'll have workshops face-to-face, -face, I think, from now on if I did this assignment again. Um, I didn't specify an AI tool to use. I guess that's just a consideration uh, in going further if we want to uh, think about publishing or things like that, making something consistent. Uh, so students use ChatGPT, they use Copilot, um, Google Gemini as well. 
all of our students have access to co-pilot, so it could be something um, to consider in the future. Uh, peer evaluation is absolutely necessary. Uh, so most of the groups worked really, really well together, which I was pleased about, but there are always issues with group work. Um, so that was helpful in those instances. And would I do it again? Yes, I'll definitely do this assessment uh, again. I will be doing it next year uh, in the same subject, although it might be a little bit different because we're more focusing on bacteriology than immunology because we're having a bit of a change in the subject. Um, but I thought it was useful. The students all got something out of it. And to me, that's the main thing. Uh, so that is a kind of a brief summary of what we did in my class uh, this year. And I guess we have time if anybody wants to ask any questions. We probably have a couple of minutes before I hand over to Belinda. Otherwise, we can wait till the end. Kathleen, there was a question posted in chat from mm -hmm. Tamsin, um, mm -hmm. uh, wondering about the 60% uh, you know, of students that found uh, this assessment useful compared with maybe other assessments they have. Mm -hmm. Whether you've got any comment or anything further on that? Um, I think it's, it's a different assessment and... Um, I mean, a lot of the subject, we're, we're trying to change, I guess, assessment pieces. A lot of the students in microbiology, we do things like tests, we do, uh, you know, short written reports, um, and it's a bit different. So this was just, you know, that they don't have to, it's not like they're going and they've got to go find all of this information and they've got to have a absolute 100% knowledge about uh, what they're putting into a, a report. It's more they were working together and actually analysing what they thought, uh, I guess, the readability of an article was. I think that that critical thinking aspect on um, annotating and evaluating, comparing their what they thought might be a really good section in uh, in an article where somebody another student would say, "Oh, I find that confusing." I think there was a lot of that, um, which yeah was different, and I think that was good. I think that that was ninety three percent of students thought that it was a a different. Um, assessment compared to what they had done previously uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's just within microbiology or if that's other subjects D the question was other subjects um, but yeah 60% found it useful and I think it was because of that col collaboration in a different way it's not everybody's got to do their part um, if we're giving an oral presentation, you're doing this part, you know, it, it normally gets broken up, I guess, with other assignments as well, where this is, they were coming together and working on a document, even if then they, they were doing it separately, they could see everybody's comments um, and what people or what other students thought about different sections. So I think that's kind of what made it a, a little bit different and useful and probably why some of the students um, actually liked collaborating in this way. Um, it, it wasn't more about this part of an assessment gets marked down low. That's because this student didn't put in, you know, whatever they needed to and so on. So, yeah, I, I like the collaborative aspect and the it's a bit different. I guess, that way. Uh, I'm just going to do my part now, which is about um, I've when I presented to Caitlin's class, we had about an hour, so I have taken some tiny little snippets of that, which I will share with you today, just literally showing uh, a bit of a tour around a Wikipedia article um, and how 
how Wikipedia works and what are some of the behind the scenes uh, things that you can access. Uh, but first of all, I just wanted to give a bit of an overview about um, some of the rules and some of the guides behind Wikipedia, like just a little bit of their background on how um, how it, how the community, the editing community, um, have got to a point where Wikipedia works the way that it works. So there is a bit of a guide to Wikipedia, um, which consists of what we call the five pillars, and these have been developed by the volunteer Wikipedia editing community. Um, so I'll just quickly unpack each of these five pillars now. So the first pillar or the first point you can see there is that Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, which sounds incredibly obvious, but sometimes I think people come with their particular viewpoint, their particular um, style, their way of writing. Um, and so we often have to come back and rethink through how we're how we're expressing the information. It's it's not a marketing brochure. It's not a place for personal reports or research or you know specific opinions. It's not an essay, which I think a lot of students often struggle with. They're used to writing sort of essay style reports. It's not a newspaper. Um, and it's also not the be all and end all of um, every single subject. It's really highlighting those key facts um, in the particular style and giving a summary um, about something. So uh, yeah, we often have to remind people it's an encyclopedia. Uh, the second uh, pillar to have a look at and sort of really leads on from that first point is that Wikipedia has a neutral point of view. All articles should be, um, sometimes you'll find articles that aren't, but all articles must be supported by citations or references to prove that something is true, that it's verifiable, and also that it's notable. It's worthy of being uh, in the encyclopedia. So all those citations that people put in must be from reliable and reputable secondary sources. Uh, the third point that uh, covers a few aspects actually is Wikipedia is free content. So the term free content covers a range of things. You can freely use and reference whatever you find in Wikipedia articles. Um, I'm sure most of you will be aware of that um, as it is openly licensed. Um, uh, additionally, whatever you write or whatever you add to a Wikipedia article, uh, you don't own, you don't have copyright over your contribution. You are freely contributing to an open content repository. Uh, so it basically is asking you to like donate your time and your brain power in some respects to creating that article. <clears throat> it also refers to copyright in that you can't copy and paste text from another article um, somewhere else on the internet or from a you know, research report, wherever it might be. You can't copy and paste that text straight into Wikipedia and publish it. You must rewrite in everything in your own words so that you are not breaking copyright laws. Um, the editing community is very strict on this. Uh, and there are also bots uh, that scan uh, editing pages and check for plagiarism. So content will be picked up and tagged for speedy deletion as soon as it's identified. And that can be within hours. So in the similar way that universities have um, plagiarism software, turn it in, whatever it might be, uh, we have stuff, technology in the back end of Wikipedia that is similar, that can track that down. Uh, the fourth point to keep in mind is that um, it is in some ways a social space. So Wikipedians, should be respectful and courteous um, online. If you disagree or don't understand why someone has written or changed something, there are specific online places called talk pages where you can hopefully rationally discuss and resolve any disagreeances. Um, I'll be able to show you one of those in a moment. We'll do a quick tour around a Wikipedia article. Um, and finally, and this is often the really interesting pillar um, that gets discussed a lot, is that Wikipedia does not have firm rules. There are guides, there's policies, and there's templates to help overall, but nothing is truly set in stone. Um, it is um, very much um, a living document contributed, you know, millions of people around the world um, can edit and read and add whatever it is that they are wanting to add. But it, yeah, it is often, uh, you know, things are decided by consensus uh, and things can change um, and things move on, especially with new technology um, and new things are happening all of the time. And finally, to help clear up any questions and because somebody always asks this, we always try to make clear that um, the editing community is very, very strict that you can't write or edit your own page. 
um, or for the company that you work for or the articles of family, work colleagues or friends. Um, this comes back to that second bullet point. It's seen as a conflict of interest and you can't have a neutral point of view over yourself or people that you know or people that you are close to. So um, yeah, these are the, the five pillars of Wikipedia. Uh, moving on, what I might do now is I will do a very quick um, tour around a Wikipedia article um, and I will share my screen now. I think Caitlin, if that's okay, I will just jump into share screen mode and I will quickly do a tour around now that we've talked over the five pillars. Um, I've jumped in straight into a Wikipedia article. When I did the tour with um, Caitlin's class, I did show them how to set up a login and did a a broader tour, but just for the purposes of today, I'm using the article that we worked through with Caitlin's class, just as an example of um, a, 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 one of the articles that a student might have chosen. This is the article for selective immunoglobulin A deficiency. This is a condition that people um, can have where their immunity is particularly low. So we um, had a look at this article during the workshop, we had a look at you know, the introductory paragraph and as you can see straight away there's some very big long words there that you know the general layperson might have a little bit of difficulty with but you can see the lead paragraph. The lead paragraph is very important. This is the one that if someone does a Google search um, and they are looking for information about this, they may have just left the doctor's surgery and been told, hey, you've got this condition. They start Googling and this is what they will see. This is what they will read. It comes up in um, those first uh, search results. So this is a very important um, paragraph for us um, and is often um, widely discussed by the editing community. There's also an info box over here on the right hand side, um, which can often have photographs or um, diagrams in this case, or point out particular information. And then the article is usually divided into sections. So you can see this section here on signs and symptoms of what to look for. You can see uh, the cause, in this case, it's indicating that it might be inherited. Uh, there's pathophysiology, again, a bit more information. Here's a table uh, with some information, diagnosis, treatment, and underneath here, there's some subheadings, use of IVIG as a treatment, prognosis. And as we're going down, you can see um, some of these um, citations here. You can see uh, the wiki links, the blue wiki links, which will take you through to another page on Wikipedia to show you different aspects of the article. Scrolling down epidemiology. Uh, so it's just sort of summarising facts about this particular condition. There's a C also, which is something that would be, um, you know, very directly linked to this condition. So this would off take you off to another Wikipedia page uh, to give you um, very closely related information. And this is what I often call the gold mine of information at the bottom of the Wikipedia article and where we often direct students straight to uh, go to these secondary sources, which are those reliable, reputable secondary sources. So here you can see uh, the list of references that have been used in this article, a nice little feature that we discovered just recently. Um, if something is an open access journal, you can now see it at a glance with this little open green lock, which highlights that this is something that you can um, access, uh, open access journal or open access article. So you can get the full text of that straight away. Um, just scrolling down a bit further, you can also see there's a PDF here if you probably just need to download that. But you can see the list of references that have helped create the um, content for this article. And of course, there's some external links where this fits um, classification wise in the ICD. Um, and some other um, categories and various things. I can hold that out or open that out to show where this fits um, sort of in the disorders causing immunodeficiency. Um, and this is another way of accessing additional information about this condition or related, um, related uh, sort of areas or topics to do with this particular health problem. So that's a quick overview of that page. It's not overly long. There are much longer Wikipedia pages, so that could be something that could be discussed by the students. Does it need expanding or is this comprehensive enough? Um, I mentioned before about the talk page. So this is the actual article itself. If someone has a disagreement or wants to add information or they've got a question, you click onto the talk button just here. 
Uh, and there's additional information. Um, this is like a behind the scenes page to let us know more about this article. Um, this is also where articles are um, what's called rated. Um, once they've been, once an article has existed for some time, often people will come around as part of a project or just as part of New Page Patrol, and will look at this article and give it a rating on or a content assessment. Um, and I think Alice will pop a link in the chat um, regarding that. Um, so this article is rated as a start class. So that's something that's like a little stub. It could really do with being expanded, but it is considered of mid importance. So it's something that we would like to see prioritized as having more content added to it. Um, there's some suggestions for links to add content. Uh, it's requested a photograph would be handy to help, um, you know, show what this condition looks like or um, to sort of help improve, uh, you know, the way that people can access information. And then there can be anything on this page. This is literally an open page where people can comment. So someone here has this particular condition and they've talked about their problems um, or their solutions, maybe, whatever it might be. I'll just scroll down a bit. Uh, someone here notes from a non-medical professional who has this, the tone of this Wikipedia definition may be accurate in general, but I question the opening statement. So this is where people can discuss those sorts of things and make suggestions. Um, Someone else is saying, I'd like to know how secretory IGA works. There's also been a copyright violation, which has been noted here. And then someone has come along, copyright problem removed and sort of discussed what they did to solve that. Someone has also suggested a review. Then there's a discussion on, well, is this an inherited condition or not? It's in the same paragraph. This needs to be resolved. But we can see that the last comment here on this page was in 2017. So um, it's been pretty quiet for quite some time. There's not a lot of discussion on this condition. Um, uh, this article sort of sat very quietly for some time. So you can toggle between article and talk here. Um, and if you had a question or wanted to um, ask the community something, you could pop that on that talk page. We also have um, the view history tab, which is quite important. Um, and I recommend people have a look at the view history tab every edit ever made on Wikipedia is kept. So every person, every the date they made that edit and what they actually did is tracked in the view history page. So you can see um, some people have come along and made a few edits. Someone's removed a redundant URL, fixed a reference, those sorts of things. You can see when I made some edits <laughs> back in April and March when Caitlin and I were running the workshop for her students. So I was showing them how to actually edit this page. Uh, then you can also see all of the edits ever made and a little um, sort of summary of what that person did when they made some edits. So the view history tab can be quite useful to see when was it last edited, how much information was added. So you can tell I added 561 words or someone then came along and re removed 33 words. So you can see the sort of like the back and forth. If it turns into what's called an edit wall. You'll see that back and forth where someone adds something, someone removes it, someone comes back and adds it, removes it. So this is a way of tracking what's happened to this page. Uh, over here, you can also see up at the top, this has been translated into a number of languages as well. So I can see that this has also uh, available in the other language Wikipedia. So it's available in Arabic, it's available in Persian or Farsi, Azerbaijani, and then down the list of the languages. So it's interesting often to see which other countries are picking up or which other languages are picking up these articles and translating them. Um, they might translate the whole article or parts of it. Um, and it just yeah depends on the skills of the person doing the translation. Um, and uh, another tool that is hidden under this tools button here is what links here, what actually links to this page. I can actually see all the other related pages down here um, is the list. So this is also mentioned on the genetic disorder this page, the blood transfusion page, pregnancy test. This is actually mentioned in a lot of other um, Wikipedia pages. So uh, one other tip that I let the students know about is that we're often used to seeing the blue links through. People often talk about the rabbit holes that they go down um, for, um, you know, for, just getting lost in Wikipedia, going through, looking and clicking on various wiki links. So this one would take you through to the article about common variable immunodeficiency. But a red link is something where someone has come along and said, oh, we need to know more about this 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 piece of information. What What is this? And it's a suggest when something's a red link, it means that um, the page doesn't exist yet. But we would like 
someone has suggested that this really should have a page of its own, but no one has actually come along to create that yet. So this is a great way in Wikipedia of tracking, um, you know, pages that need to be created. So a student who maybe um, has done a lot of research in this particular topic or on this specific condition may know um, and have found out what this is and they might then create an actual brand new Wikipedia page about I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, whatever that um, condition is or that characteristic is, um, that would be great to have a page on Wikipedia about that. So that's if you see red links, that is where we would love to have some content created for that. Um, I, if people want, I can quickly show how you actually add um, a citation, but if I click on the edit button up the top here, you'll see the little tools pop up. Get a little toolbar in a moment here and this is the little toolbar that you get that you know when you're in edit mode um, and you can immediately now just start typing. I can click here and I could start typing a sentence um, about um, selective IgA deficiency. Um, I can add a citation just by using the cite button or I could add a link by using the link button. Um, there's various formatting options here to make things bold or make a heading, whatever it might be. Um, I can add a citation if people want, or if that's um, if that's enough of a little summary. I'm not sure if I've hit time. I feel like I've slightly gone over my time. You have not gone over your time. I haven't. Okay. Well, in um, that case, I I'll... do want to hear from Prue about. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's a little tour. I will just jump out of. Um, publish mode but yeah that's a little tour which I went around and showed the students in Caitlin's class um, and uh, they then use some of that information being able to check the talk pages using the view history um, and also updating some of the information that they um, that they found uh, you just um, from the sessions that we ran with um, with Caitlin's class so I'll just stop sharing now so we can get back to the presentation. So Prue. Thanks, Belinda. That's really helpful and leads nicely into hopefully people have seen lots of ways that they could uh, use this in their own teaching. Um, and I know we've got people online who have already uh, used Wikipedia in their teaching. So we will definitely, we do want to hear from, from everybody. Um, Belinda, if you could just share, I've just got some dot points that will keep me on track and so will Alice. But um, I guess the first thing, I, I just want to give a quick um, rundown on some ways you've you've heard um a really good uh summary from caitlin of the type type of classic first assignment that um you might use in higher education um or adapt in the school sector and um and it works it works really well but whatever you you know if you're thinking about this and we would really encourage you to for the reasons that people have spoken about already but um, it's got to come down to the learning outcomes, obviously, or um, silos, um, graduate outcomes, whatever it is that um, you need to be able to tie it back to that. And uh, so here are, I guess, some of the categories, the types of uh, Wikipedia uh, teaching activities that people do. It's something of a continuum, I feel, from uh, more straightforward through to quite complex. Uh, but as you know, there's no straight line in anything to do with education or in Wikipedia. Um, but I guess also represents how much time you might need to get dedicate to this particular type of activity. Uh, so starting with that um, foundation piece around communication skills, um, you know, as I said, classic, um, you've heard from, from Caitlin, communication of technical topics to a lay audience, uh, getting students to think about styles and you know, often a very good first year activity uh, to get people thinking, reviewing when they might not be ready to write themselves. Um, 
the translation one's interesting. I haven't ever done this, but um, as Belinda showed you, there are multiple language versions of Wikipedia. Most topics will have multi uh, have articles in multiple languages. So I can imagine see Wikipedia as a rich source of authentic language comparison and translation activities for students if you've got the luxury of students with um, speaking other languages or learning languages. Um, then getting more into the critical thinking, so um, definitely this was in, incorporated in uh, Caitlin's example, but getting students to critically analyse, um, going beyond just reading and determining you know, how well an article covers a topic, assess what's missing, the gap stuff. And you can really only do this when they've already, when students have um, learned about that topic. So I guess the first, the, the reading Wikipedia as a way of getting an overview of a topic is one thing. And then at the other end of, well, how well have you learnt about this um, particular discipline or topic? Um, tell us where Wikipedia is lacking um, or pick up new things that we didn't have time to teach in um, our one semester or whatever. Um, uh, part of that is how much, um, how well, an article is documented with reliable sources and that leads really nicely for the, I mean, this is my area as a um, librarian and moving students into research skills, often in the postgrad level, you can be doing this with the referencing uh, because it's exactly the same type of uh, skill they need for their own literature reviews um, and it it gets them to realise what might be a reliable source, what might not be a reliable source. Um, we had a classic uh, recently in one of the assignments I've marked where uh, things, uh, everyone has cited this strange college of somewhere in the US. I thought, didn't know they were a special, you know, um, teaching um, university on this particular topic we were studying. It turns out, of course, when you search Google, it was the top thing, the first definition that came up. And so we got that definition 50 times. Um, but yes, if you can talk to people about where are the good places to get that definitional material. Uh, collaboration also in Caitlin's assignment, um, also in most, you know, most outcomes or, and most people have to have some group work assignment. So, you know, there are various ways you could uh, use Wikipedia to assist with that. Um, at the ultimate end, obviously, the whole thing about Wikipedia is a community of collaborative um, editors. Um, an editor doesn't just mean somebody who writes or approves content. There are so many things, so many ways that you can improve Wikipedia or other wiki um, projects. Um, but, you know, they will receive feedback um, and they'll learn to negotiate with other editors if they get into the actual writing. Uh, media and information literacy is becoming a big thing. Um, Wikipedia has various projects on um, misinformation. And uh, so I can see this as a, as a booming area for um, people it's getting, you know, we've moved a long way in the 20 odd years that Wikipedia has been around from, oh, don't trust Wikipedia and never cite, you know, we still say don't cite Wikipedia, but, you know, don't trust Wikipedia. We've now come through to um, part of the um, fact checking uh, ritual these days is to check Wikipedia because um, it is like one of the most um, trusted places because so many eyes see it and there, it is so transparent in how it's been um, developed. Um, so yes, good chance for students to reflect on sources and appropriate usage for different purposes. And at the real end, you know, yeah, we'd love every student in the world to uh, know how to write a Wikipedia article that would make our lives uh, as builders of the encyclopedia um, much better, but I think it, the first step in anything is understanding how something works. So, um, you know, this assignment that Caitlin's done, I think, has certainly uh, done that for all students, and then some students have been able to get to the next level. But um, this does take a lot of time. So we do have examples in Australia of uh, universities that have had a basically a um, semester unit 
uh, um, in which students have written, learned how to edit and have actually written Wikipedia articles or Wikiversity. Um, uh, we didn't, um, you yeah, know, I think we could certainly have other sessions on, on that down the track. But um, yes, yeah, so the fact-based persuasive writing style is quite different. So even if people don't write onto Wikipedia, they could um, also start by writing Wikipedia type um, articles um, instead of an essay or in, instead of um, another piece of work. Um, this document here, Instructor Basics, um, if we can put the link in the chat perhaps, is, um, oh, thank you, you have beaten me to that, that's great. Uh, this is from the Wiki um, Education Foundation in the US. Um, they have some fantastic resources and um, they're all available for us to use uh, or to edit, um, modify and make them more applicable to Australia and New Zealand um, uh, students. Just a word of warning, all of their resources are, um, are online and they have a fantastic uh, support uh, system for, but it's only available in person for higher education institutions in the US. They're a charity that uh, that is the per, their grant um, conditions. Uh, so we try very hard to learn from them. And uh, if you could go to the next slide now, thank you. Um, when you get started in any um, teaching with with Wiki, uh, then yes, do set out with some support and uh, Wikimedia Australia is here to help colleagues, you know, if you can do it with somebody else rather than um, Caitlin had to do it across universities, but there are other people around that we can put you in, in contact with. Um, and we will rely on, on other people's resources. Here's some that I've um, picked out. So there is an open edX, a new course just gone up on learning Wikipedia. Um, and oh, the reviewing the literature, sorry, there's that dashboard just above the FAQ5 link. Uh, that has a whole lot of peer reviewed literature. So if you're having any trouble justifying the value of incorporating Wikipedia into your teaching, then um, there's that list of peer reviewed articles. Um, but as we said, yeah, fit your own mask first. You, know, you wouldn't teach a science lab task without trying it out yourself. So don't, yeah, please don't require students to do something on Wikipedia that you haven't practiced first. Um, so that's why we're saying just go through some of these um, training materials. There's a YouTube series there that Wikimedia Australia and Franklin Women have put together. Um, and then there's a whole... Um, another self-paced thing on how to teach with Wikipedia and that is really useful. So we would ask everybody to go through that first. Think about how much time you've got. I think we did run out of time. Um, we really did want students who were interested to be able to make some of those changes themselves on Wikipedia. But um, yes, it's just, you know what it's like trying to fit it. Something has to be accessible for the students to really want to do it, but you don't want to make their actual edits assessed um, usually because they, you know, they're really not in control of that um, and it can become very stressful. So that's something we can perhaps talk about in the, in the groups. Um, I think if you also consider the content assessment criteria, again, I find that really useful because it shows students and, you, you know, all the different levels that you can work at. No way. I mean, I'm never going to get a feature article, I wouldn't think, but it's good for people, for students to see this is what Wikipedia thinks is good. And these are the things, the area you can get the most traction is in the stub and the, the lower level articles because there's lots more for them to critique. Mm. Um, and lastly, please think about how you'll share your findings. Really grateful that Caitlin took the effort to go through the ethics process at her university and make this into a you know research activity. Um, and so she'll be able to share that. Um, and you know we welcome everything from blog posts, presenting at a webinar. You can take it off to your network. Um, activities or to a conference let's just get the word out there about um, 
what's what's possible. Yeah, we just wanted to say um, we really want to keep the conversation going. It sounds like there's a lot of interest and um, everyone's really keen to to keep talking and keep sharing ideas, which is, you know, the very wiki way of everyone working together to create something that's really amazing. So, um, yeah, we just want to say a big thank you again to everyone who came along. A big thank you to the team and the co-presenters, to Tiru, Caitlin. Uh, also, shout out to Brian, who couldn't be present today. Um, but we're really looking forward to running this again next year. Um, if you don't mind just taking a few minutes at, um, now, just while we're wrapping up, feel free to jump onto our Google form and provide um, just some quick answers to some feedback. We won't be collecting any contact details at all. It's completely anonymous. We would love to um, just find out, you know, ways if we do this again, um, what would, what should we be doing differently to make it more effective and, you know, for everyone. Um, but apart from that, we just wanted everyone to know if you did want to get in touch with us at Wikimedia Australia, if you've got more questions or if you've got ideas, what have you, please get in touch. Our website is wikimedia.org.au. You can find out news events. We have a monthly newsletter that we you can subscribe to, lots of resources. We work in partnership with universities, but there's a lot of other organisations we work with as well. Um, we do have a... Um, a opportunity open at the moment for a small grant if anyone is interested our partner projects are open at the moment until the 20th of September if I've got the date right um, yeah and we're also on social media so you're welcome to follow us there um, on our just general contact is contact at wikimedia.org.au but that is probably really the very quick um, wrap up for today but yeah just thanks again to everyone for coming for sharing your time any final questions or comments or Things, but I think we've got, we should have everyone's email and we will set up a time or we'll send out a poll to work out a time <laughs> of when we can meet. But yeah, really big thank you to everyone for coming, for spending the time with us. Um, it's been a really exciting and really um, interesting project to be part of and the feedback from the students is that they got a lot out of it as well. So yeah, we're looking forward to running this again next year with Caitlin. It'll be really good to hopefully do something in person. So it was it worked well online, but it's good to do things in person as well. So 